it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com. It's a brisk uh, May morning here, and it's time to do another one of those garden tours brought to you by my sponsor, Vessi Seeds. Uh, sorry I haven't been keeping up the frequency of videos lately. I've just had uh, technical issues, which are very difficult to solve with a lot of stores being closed and stuff like that. And uh, I've actually tried to film this about three times, but uh, the sound quality has been so poor, I just threw the film away. <laughs> so. It's, what can you do but be zen about things sometimes, right? So uh, anyway, let's have a look around and uh, let me show you what's going on in the garden here. <laughs> Alright, so here we are at the uh, entrance of the garden. These hugelkultur beds, I've only got garlic here that I planted last fall. The rest of the beds, there's nothing planted yet. I plant squash and potatoes and stuff like that out here. It's just too early to be planting stuff like that. Uh, for those that wonder how I've been uh, watering my garden, I use this goldfish pond. And uh, all I do is I just get my kids to run back and forth with little cans of water like this. <laughs> and I just water the bed with those. That's it. I basically fish the water into this bucket here and they dunk these into the bucket and bring it back and forth. I, of course I do it without the kids sometimes too, but it's too, uh, right now, this time of year, it's just too cold to uh, hook the watering hose up. It's a good ways to my house, at least 50 yards, and it freezes, so, because <laughs> it's, it's still getting around freezing at night sort of thing, right? There's definitely, uh, the pond isn't frozen, but a couple, couple spots where uh, water's pooled on some of my domes in the garden, the, uh, there's still ice forming at night and stuff like that, so I don't want to wreck a hose. So, yeah, I just dip it out here. I, mean, I don't have a lot of watering to do anyway, but anyway, that's the goldfish pond. All right, so uh, walking into the garden. Man, the sun's powerful this morning. Uh, looks like I got something planted here, but I don't, so I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> I'm going to be putting peppers, I think, in this uh, sometime soon. This is a piece of one of my cold frames that I've sort of repurposed. Uh, let's go down this side of the garden here. Um, I've taken all the domes and stuff off, so if the garden looks a bit disorganized, it's just because I popped all the domes off. And anywhere where we've got any sort of new greens growing, uh, it's not because it's been warm here, it's because I've had domes over them. <laughs> Otherwise I don't even think they would have germinated. So this bed here I've got uh, uh, kale in the middle and uh, lettuce on the right. And, well a kind of lettuce I guess on the right. And uh, uh, spinach on the left with a bit of kale. This, the kale seeds are so uh, so uh, tenacious. These ones were just dropped on the ground and they uh, germinated anyway. And you can tell it was cold last night by the way, you know, when it's a really cold night, kale will curl, curl down like this. It looks like it's been frosted, and that is even with the dome over it. Um, but luckily kale's tough, it can take that sort of thing, so it'll bounce back. A little bit of weeding to do here, and i got to get at that soon because the black flies have begun. Uh, what else do I got going here? Got some uh, carrots here. This is a good sense of, you know, how things, most things, without a dome, right? these carrots... I had plastic over these until I got them germinated. So they have germinated. And I've kept this dome here, so my, my guess is that the ones underneath the dome are a little further along. Not really, a little bit maybe, but uh, anyway, we got carrots growing. That's good in this bed. Uh, I'll just go down this side here. Nothing planted here yet. That's uh, onions and garlic. Onions have, I don't know if you watched that onion planting video, but the onions have started to grow a little bit, some of them anyway, then I haven't all come in, but they've, they've begun. Uh, the, the little tiny boxes at the ends, I've reserved those for perennial herbs and stuff like that. So I've been moving herbs from different parts of my garden to these. It just makes sense to me. Um, just leave them untouched, mulch them up, and uh, let the herbs own the space. Uh, this garden here, I've got uh, beets growing in it. Uh, they're, they're probably about two inches high, and uh, they're getting attacked a little bit, but I'm just going to let, let them sort themselves out a little bit. I mean, you've you got to be cool about things when you're gardening. If, if you've got uh, a row of something planted and you see, you know, one-third of that row disappear, just replant. <laughs> you know, that's all you can do. Replant and be a bit more vigilant. I've not been 
vigilant at all about watching pests and stuff like that in the garden this year. I've just sort of let things happen and been pretty lazy, so I, I may have to replant some things. Um, here's some relatively pest proof plants. I got spinach and lettuce growing here under those plastic rectangle things. And these would have been planted like end of March sort of thing. And they've come along very slowly, but they are growing and uh, they're doing all right, right? They're going to be ready to harvest soon. Uh, and that's what this garden's for. As soon as these are done, I'll, I'll replant, you know, put more of them in there. That's this is a greens garden. At least that's, that was my plan anyway. Uh, Want to get a sense of where my gardening season is? Look at my rhubarb. The rhubarb is uh, coming along and, you know, uh, I would say we got the largest leaves are maybe eight inches wide at the widest. So, and the, the maybe rhubarb might be a foot high in total, maybe. Uh, the, the highest of the rhubarb might be a foot high at this stage in the season. So they're coming along good. Um, here's a bed where I planted, uh, uh, this is going to be a potato bed, but uh, I planted these end of March under, under that dome over there uh, for an early crop. So I got uh, kale and spinach and lettuce. And you can see the lettuce is pretty good, maybe six inches high. Uh, kale, maybe four inches high. This is the uh, winter boar kale. A little bit of dill coming in there in places. And uh, the spinach is looking good too. In this garden I've got uh, parsnips. And they're coming in. I mean, you can see those are the parsnips right there, right? They're coming in. The robins have been messing around with my mulch here. They, they loved, I got a number of robins living in the area. And more than any other bird, they like to get in the mulch and uh, uh, frig around and, and look for worms and stuff like that. So they're, they're not after my parsnips, they're after other things, but it sometimes messes up my parsnips. But uh, oh well, it usually works out okay. Uh, here's kind of my, this would have been planted middle of March. and. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's coming along pretty good. I mean, this is one of those beds that uh, had a, almost like a mole infestation in it. I still have moles. I mean, there's a mole hole right there. Um, so I, I definitely did not eradicate them as I thought I had. I definitely still see signs of moles in my garden. And uh, one or two, not a big deal. I, I expect the uh, garter snakes to sort them out as the season progresses. But um, anyway, yeah, I mean, using my hand as a gauge, right? That's a good size spinach. These are ready for harvest. Right, so we got spinach and lettuce growing here. This bed is going to be, uh, these are all going to come out very soon because I'm going to, this is one of my, this is like the sunniest garden I have. It's right in the middle and it's not really obstructed by any trees or anything like that. So this is going to be um, eggplant and peppers, I think. I'm going to give them the best real estate in the garden and see what kind of results we can get. Uh, over here we got uh, um, a carrot garden here. There, there I mean, they're, they're small and they're growing. Um, these cold nights, my goodness, I don't know if it's killing them or, no, I mean, they're, they're hanging in. There's one right there. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but they're hanging in. Um, but definitely uh, not very showy at this point in the season. <laughs> there's, a, there's a heavier row so you get a sense of what we're working with, right? I didn't plant enough carrots last year, so I decided to get a bit more aggressive with it this year. There's uh, more garlic and onions, and uh, that garden I showed you before. Going down the middle, we got the tulips, another indicator of my gardening season. Yeah, my, that's the stage, that's, that's the state my tulips are in right now. Right, they're coming along very slowly. And the irises, this is actually a strawberry garden. And you can see in amongst the tulips, the odd strawberry there. But uh, I just moved the strawberries there last year, so I'm not expecting great things out of this garden this year. This strawberry garden was moved the previous year, so it's coming in a little thicker and looking all right. So I'm anxious to uh, see how this one works out. That variety is uh, Seascape, for those that are interested, day neutral strawberry. Nothing planted here yet. It's gonna be corn and beans, I think. Uh, more garlic and onions. Uh, this garden, as you can tell, is a trellis there. A little bit of evidence. Um, it's gonna be uh, peas. Looks like the slugs have been beating the hell out of my peas. Holy smokes. Um, anyway, I planted more. So there's an early planting of peas here, and then I had a, a later planting that haven't germinated yet. So uh, nothing, to, nothing to write home about, but you know, anyway, I'll get a first wave and then a second wave. 
A lot of these ones that get eaten down, they put up more foliage and uh, sort of come back. Like this one here, this one had been eaten down. This one probably would have been this size. Something made it down and it's come back. So yeah, just let things sort themselves out. Usually it works out okay. Indication of state of season. Look at my uh, grapes. There's virtually no, virtually no buds uh, forming on the grapes. They're very, <laughs> this plant looks almost like it's dead. Boy, I hope not. But uh, yeah, there, there's a bud, right? Not much to write home about yet. It's just been cold. It's been sort of a, a no, you know, we had a very cold April and, and a cold May. I mean, it was snowing yesterday here, middle of May. Um, nothing planted in this bed yet. That's going to be zucchini. Uh, this is more strawberries and the, the, the uh, uh, apple tree that I planted last year, uh, Sweet Sixteen variety. Uh, over here I got uh, uh, asparagus. So this, these ones were direct seeded. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. Um, anyway, just so you can get a sense, right? There they are coming in. Right, there's some more. They're different sizes. That's about as big as they are right now. So they're not even fingertip width now, not even pinky width. That's a larger one there, but still, probably not a harvest year, probably next year. That would be year three or year, year two or year three, I guess, um, which makes sense. But these are still coming in better than the ones that I, you know, sometimes you can buy already started ones with roots. And uh, I did plant some of those a number of years ago. They haven't even pushed through the soil yet. And, uh, and I've had problems with them from day one. Whereas these direct seeded ones just stick the seed in the soil, have uh, just done so much better. Uh, more strawberries, uh, blueberries, that's the state of the buds right now, right? They're starting to bud out. These ones, uh, you know, I got two different varieties of blueberries. They seem to be budded out a little bit more. So see how that goes. Uh, nothing planted here. This, th these are what used to be my cold frames. Of course, now they're just repurposed. I got uh, parsnips growing in this bed. You can see they've uh, germinated here. I don't know why. There's nothing showing here. What happened with these? It's like they all just disappeared. Um, anyway, uh, I had uh, kind of like just loose plastic on this, and I had this dome over the other, over the other end. You can see the ones under the dome have all all germinated. Okay. Anyway, two beds, two good beds of parsnips. I think is the right the right number. Um, I can't get enough of those into me during the winter months. Uh, here's a bed where I planted uh, um, broc what's it called? Artwork broccolini and uh, some kind of cauliflower. The broccolini, as you can see, is coming in great, right? It's starting to put out second leaves. The uh, cauliflower came in great and then I, I didn't check it for a number of weeks and something just beat the hell out of it. So most of them have been killed and I need to replant. Uh, I just keep putting it off and putting it off and getting busy doing other things. But uh, assuming I still have some seeds, but uh, yeah, I've only got about five cauliflower plants that survived whatever got in there and took them out. I, I'm going to guess it was slugs. But for some reason, on the other side of that stick there, they just left the, uh, the broccoli alone. Maybe they, I mean, it doesn't taste as good. I don't know. Um, yeah, here's the uh, uh, lo uh, lingonberries, partridge berries that I planted uh, about a week or so ago. Looking great. Uh, and if you notice, as I'm walking around, there seems to be a bit more sand around the garden. I got another six cubic yards of sand um, and uh, hired another young guy and paid him <laughs> for a couple days' work uh, lugging that all out to here. Uh, so now I think the garden's kind of done, right? We've got a good large fence enclosure. All the walking paths are well sanded to capture heat, keep the weeds down, make it kind of tick proof. And uh, yeah, it looks nice, I think. Um, nothing planted here or here. Uh, this garden has beets there about, I'm not gonna pop this lid off. You just have to trust me when I tell you they're about an inch or two high, starting to put out second leaves. Uh, more garlic and onions. Uh, this bed here is uh, Swiss chard. Yeah, and it's coming along good, right? Maybe two, three inches high. 
second leaves are out it's, it's you know definitely looks like Swiss chard you know so once these are about six inches high I'll, I'll pull them out and reposition them throughout the entire bed here uh, nothing planted here nothing planted here nothing planted here yet this garden is going to be collard greens I did a video I don't know a month or so ago um, when I sowed these so they're coming along pretty good right Right, they're growing so again these will be thinned out and repositioned uh, once they've got some real size a little bit too small for that sort of operation right now I, I should mention too um, the, the uh, company that gave me the uh, lingonberries they also gave me these uh, oh what are they called um, Hascap Hascap berries so I planted those so uh, the Hascaps are fairly large so I have them at the end of the garden I got one here and uh, one over there and uh, and one right there and uh, here we got uh, more onions and garlic <laughs> I think I planted about 250 garlic this year so hopefully that'll do me uh, parsnips planted and uh, and uh, salsify and man the robins have really given this a good going over but they, they have germinated so I mean what I have to do the robins I'm gonna do a video on this but the robins basically kick this stuff over and every day you have to come along and sort of move it back so that's a bit annoying and uh, a good argument for using the cardboard instead anyway parsnips have germinated parsnips are so tough I just love them they, they have all the qualities I like in a person <laughs> in a plant sort of thing resilience usefulness they're sweet if you treat them right <laughs> you know they're just great uh, you haven't watched that video I, I got a video called parsnips the yam of the north and uh, yeah if you, if you know about yams it's a sort of really reliable staple starch vegetable that are grown in hot countries I don't think parsnips get enough play um, in our culinary culture here in North America they are delicious so easy to store just so many good things to say about them and they don't mind the cold at all now the salsify I don't even know if it's growing but I had a kale here that I let go to seed and I collected the seeds but a lot of them fell on the ground and I've got kale growing all over the place here so and some weeds of course so uh, this spots gonna need a bit of work I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it or how I'm gonna let it uh, evolve but um, anyway I thought I'd just show I try to show everything right so not just things looking perfect and beautiful like that awesome spinach and lettuce I showed earlier but uh, also gardens looking all screwed up and <laughs> just uh, almost like an experiment gone wrong where's my damn salsify I do not know <laughs> all right the wind's starting to pick up here so we better wrap things up but uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed that and get a sense of what's going on here and you can compare notes and so on and so forth uh, if you enjoyed this video, video please like share subscribe uh, check check the little click the little bell so you get notified when I make new videos and uh, until next time, get, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.